Hi everybody, salut à tous, happy new year and I wish you all a very uh, creative and productive year. So we'll start with the uh, wood uh, material, exactly a versatile wood generator. As you'll see, we are, we'll make a complete material with exposed parameters. Here I am in Substance Player and I will be able to um, make a very clean, very clean wood that can be used for uh, parquet or nice flooring. Or on the contrary, I'll be able to produce a very uh, damaged uh, surface that could be used for um, very old and damaged wood on shields, boats or docks. Part of my inspiration came from the TV show, the TV series Vikings. For now, I'm just gonna show you how you can make something something very clean with this generator. That's nice. Now what I'm going to show you, what I want to show you is uh, how I can make this very damaged and hold. Well, you can play with it for a long time. <laughs> there are many options to, to play with. Let's try uh, to see it in 4K. Okay, nice. Let's decrease the scratches a little. Let's dive in Substance Designer and see uh, how it was done. This is the graph. Of course, today we're not going to be able to cover everything, but this video could be uh, structured in two parts if you want. Today we are going to focus uh, mainly on the texturing work. So I would say all of these frames here, maybe with the wood carving, but we'll leave out uh, the color, the roughness and the normals and uh, the other details. The details about uh, the generator and the expo exposed parameters. You see, there are a lot to cover. Some are really easy, it's just uh, like this one. In most cases, I just uh, expose the opacity of the blend, blend nodes. But sometimes, uh, like, uh, like this one, in order to, to be able to have some control over the picture that you can input. Sometimes you have to um, be able to edit and expose the transform matrix. So this requires a bit more uh, work. So maybe we'll see that in, a, in another video. 
in a specific video about uh, making a generator. So today I would like to focus only on the texturing base and yes, all of these nodes here. So if you want to do something like this, the first thing you have to do, I think, would be to start with uh, a tile generator. Of course, you, you could also make uh, different styles of patterns. You could uh, make a herringbone pattern, this kind of thing. This one is uh, very interesting. You can make all kinds of pattern, but for this video, this project, uh, let's keep things simple. So you can start with a simple uh, tile generator. If, if you want uh, full length uh, planks, you just have to put one in the X amount. So in my case, I just exposed the Y amount parameter and didn't change anything except uh, the luminance random in order to have some contrast, some different values, gray values over the planks and it is exposed too. In order to have a bit more control over it, I just use the levels node. Okay, so the first uh, effect, the short grooves, um, let me show them to you. Texture, short grooves. Okay, this one here. So the blending mode is subtract and it's just a noise, simple uh, directional scratches. Some of you sometimes ask me uh, what are the parameter settings. They are here. So I, if I don't cover them for you, just uh, click pause on the video and you can uh, copy them or at least uh, look at them. So it's just the directional scratches. This level node in this instance doesn't do, uh, doesn't do much. It's just there to uh, have some control if I want to, but I could uh, I could squeeze it. Same thing for this uh, safe transform. I thought I could um, tie it by two in order to have uh, smaller uh, lines. But as you can see, if I delete it, nothing changes. So it's just a matter of using a directional warp, even though in this case, it's not really important. The directional warp used with the planks and the different values help me to offset uh, the texture, the grooves here, based on the intensity and the values of the planks. So, um, but of course, with this uh, example, it's difficult to see uh, the difference. We'll see. Uh, we'll see it better uh, in another example. So, let's not think too much about this directional warp. So here are our first texture example, the short grooves. I think it's important to have this in a wood. I'm going to reduce it a bit. It's a first, uh, it's a start, you know, when, you, when you're when you making a wood, you really have to pay attention to every detail. And this is something very basic when you make, a, when you want to make a wood. All right, so let's move on to the borders. If I want to uh, be able to uh, put a bit of damages on the planks borders, as you can see here, it's just another blend node with a min darken option, min darken blending mode, and in the foreground. Just use a slope blur grayscale. 32 samples, very low intensity and min mod. In the grayscale, of course, I just send the planks. And as a slope, it's just a perlin noise with a small scale. I blurred it quite heavily but uh, I'm really not sure uh, whether it's necessary. Well, it was used uh, for this uh, vector warp grayscale, but we'll see that later. So I just used the safe transform grayscale to tile it a little, tile it four times, played with the rotation, the offset, and just sending, sending this to our slope blur. 
and that creates a wear on the borders, punks borders. Then you can play with the opacity and the min darken mode to control the effect. I'm just gonna uh, now decrease it. Okay. Next uh, blend is about the long grooves, so it's uh, almost exactly the same as the short grooves. Once again, I used um, a directional warp to break the continuity of the of the texture, depending on the planks. So uh, long grooves. Uh, let's see what that does. It's something that I don't, uh, I didn't use often in the generator here. But I think in some cases uh, it can be useful to add this uh, this option. So long grooves, a subtract blending mode, directional warp, so in the intensity input, or planks, and in the input, it's just I think it's um, maybe directional scratches or an anisotropy. Let's see what it is. Okay, it's a, it's an anisotropic noise with a levels and a safe transform. In this case, I tiled it by two, and it goes in our directional warp. It's going to be this, almost the same process every time. Now the veins, a very very important part, of course. Just going to decrease the long grooves. And uh, maybe increase the veins to the maximum. So the veins, just another blend node. This time um, I struggled to find the correct blending mode, but I think uh, multiply is the most interesting because no matter the contrast, no matter uh, if a plank is uh, dark or light in, uh, in value, with the multiply blending mode, you always uh, see the veins the same way. If you choose a soft light, you see them correctly in, on a darker plank, but almost not at all on a lighter one. So, and it's the same with uh, the, the other, with uh, overlay or max lighten. So multiply, this instance works pretty well. Okay, so how did I make the veins, the veiny fibers? Actually, it's really simple. Okay, it's here. As you can see, just a few nodes. I started with uh, an anisotropic noise. Uh, maybe I can use... No, it's not the same settings. Anisotropic noise. Um, the settings, the Y amount here is uh, very important. Between 100 and, one, and 150 uh, can make a pretty big difference here in the warp. You want a uh, yeah, value of, I would say, 130 is pretty nice. Then just, of course, blur it a little. Intensity of 2 is, uh, is a good settings. Then a warp at full intensity. And of course, this is too, too squashed. So just uh, transform 2D. So you don't stretch the width, you stretch only the height. I think uh, it's a stretch, uh, let's see. I think it's a stretch by, I don't know, 300%, 400, I don't know. No, no, only 200%, okay. No, a bit more than that. All right, so you can stretch it like that up until you find something that you like. But, you know, it's too clean. 
we don't feel uh, the wood fibers in, in them. So I just added a blend node. I wanted to find uh, a nice texture above it. So just with a multiply blending mode. So I thought the directional tree is a good option. And I think the other ones are maybe a bit too dark. So this one is good. The problem with the directional noise tree is that uh, if you scale it, it takes a lot of processing time. Let's uh, let's see, for example, if I scale uh, it by three, you know, it's, uh, it's already uh, as much as uh, demanding as a grunge map, if not more. So my only choice was to use a safe transform grayscale and tell it by eight. Just want a small uh, slight texturing effect over our veins. So that's, uh, that's nice. So let's send our vein now to a directional warp. So I'm just sending the veins here, the fiber, to a directional a DT directional warp. If you want it, you can uh, grab it here. I talked about it in previous video, so I won't uh, talk about it now. It's just um, I send it here just because I want to be able to produce uh, some uh, fiber deformations for the knots. Let's see if I say if I put the value of 20. If you can see the wood deforms. So I had to send the veins in this. So the wood deforms nicely based on, uh, on some uh, shapes that I have here. Some are circles, other are more um, squashed, more oval. But we'll see that later. Now we're just uh, talking about the veins. So the veins just to multiply, as I said before. So now let's talk about the knots. For the knots, I just used a tile sampler because in a wood flooring, you have, um, as I just said, you have rounded and then more ovaid um, shapes. So the tile sampler is, uh, is a nice one to do that. Just have to play with the size, the size random. For the X and Y elements, I, I chose five. The pattern is a parboloid. You have to, uh, of course, create an offset and play with the position random a little. Here I played with the global offset, but uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, necessary. It was for some of my tests. Of course, having a bit of color random is uh, is always nice. You don't want all the knots to be uh, equally intense. Some must be very light. Others must be uh, more intense. Then, as I wanted to deform the wood sometimes uh, on a large surface, large area, like this, I used a blur to extend the knots, um, the knots influence on the wood, just brought up the whites, then just use the normal uh, directional warp because I didn't want the knots to, uh, once again, to be um, just to sit on uh, two planks at once. So in the intensity input, you just stand the levels, you know, the planks with the contrast. And if uh, the right intensity, it must cut like this. Just cut off uh, a knot and it works pretty well. So here it's not perfect, but it depends on the intensity. 
maybe an intensity of 100 is, uh, is good enough. Yeah, you see that the knots are cut based on the planks. It works well here in this case. It's important. But of course, you have to have some contrast over the planks. Otherwise, without any contrast, that won't work properly. All right, now to, to have an influence over the, the veiny fibers that we saw it uh, earlier, we just use a uh, directional warp, no direction, no direction vectors, and an intensity of 20 to 30. Forty, in my opinion, it's too strong. Thirty, it's probably too strong too. But twenty, twenty-five, uh, it's kind of nice. If you think they are too big, you can just decrease the scale in the tie sampler. Let's try a scale of 0.2. Okay, now they are much, much smaller. Of course, this is a parameter that you can, uh, that you can uh, expose to. Okay, that's a, that's a start. But I wanted to uh, add on top of this, well, on top of this, even if it's not necessary, because it can be enough, I wanted to create uh, more textured knots, more precise knots. So I just use the same, um, the same directional warp, and another one, a DT directional warp, with a grunge map as the input. The intensity of this second DT directional warp is driven by the same intensity as this one here. Well, it's just the same parameter. Deformation fibers. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna demonstrate it to you. Texture, knots. If I set uh, the intensity here at zero, gonna work also on this node here. If I set it I 20, it has the effect here on this one. Then it's just a matter of isolating the textured nodes just with a blend node set to copy and as the opacity just sending these ones here. Then a levels node, just to correct their value. Well, I did uh, this thing here, this part here, with a blur, a histogram scan, and a blend. Where it's cleaner, you see, you don't have uh, all these uh, things that are caused by the uh, directional warp. Like this one. So maybe it's useful. I'm just gonna, if you want to do the same thing, if you want to do this pass here, I'm just gonna show you the settings that I used a blur, a histogram scan to act as a mask. And a blend node to keep only what I want on your small part. Then I just send this to a new blend that is called uh, Knots with a subtract mode. And the opacity of this subtract is also driven by the same directional warps intensity. And let me show you the, the function. So I have the deformation fibers here, a linear interpolation function, 
And uh, the thing is that the intensity of the, this directional warp goes from 0 to 40, when the uh, opacity here goes from 0 to 1. So it, you just have to uh, create a very narrow, very small range with two floats from 0 to 0 0.01. And all this is driven by the deformation fibers. And it works pretty well. Let me show you once again. I just have one slider that works for, for the veins, that deform the veins, that create uh, texture knots here, and that play on the uh, subtraction from the planks as you can see. So just one slider for three effects. Okay, nice. So that was a big part. You know, I don't want to talk too much about the generator right now. Um, it's a complex subject and um, I will make a specific video about it in the near future. All right, so let's move on to the other texturing uh, effects that we can apply to our wood. The sewing effect here this time I chose uh, had the linear uh, dodge as a blending mode. It's located in the texture texturing source. So uh, I started with a slope block grayscale, 32 samples, 0.01 intensity, in the grayscale and anisotropic noise. with a high uh, vertical uh, amount of uh, a thousand and a directional noise with a scale of eight. Problem with this one is the cost. So maybe I can just uh, decrease the scale and use safe transform with a tiling of, I don't know, maybe six. Shouldn't change much be quite of the same, maybe eight, yeah, it should work. Yeah, I just use a mask, because I would still want the effect, the sewing effect to be the same everywhere. But I think you can uh, play it like this. You can use a copy and a mask in the opacity uh, slot. You can also use a multiply, you send what you want to mask in the background and in the foreground, the mask in itself, and use a multiply. And it's uh, the same, just a quick uh, quick tip, doesn't uh, change anything actually. So the mask is just a cloud 2, with the levels to increase the darker areas, and another levels. Not very necessary, but uh, in my case and during my tests, it worked uh, nice, uh, nicely. Then, same technique, I use the directional warp with the planks just to try to break it, break the continuity. Not sure if it uh, works uh, very well indeed. In fact, let's try to see how it works. Sewing effect, right, it's here. Yeah, I'm not sure it works really, really well, you know. The continuity of the lines is not uh, broken. Maybe it's because uh, I need to put this safe transform, which rotate it before. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, this way it works way better. Well, it's nice because when I make this video, I can uh, improve uh, what I did. It's always good to review your work. Okay, quite satisfied with this uh, new directional warp. Okay, that's it for the sewing effect. 
Let's turn it down now. Sewing effect. Go back to zero, please. All right, that's nice. This one. Here we have the cracks. So the cracks. It's more like, uh, you know, some very small animals, uh, yeah, termites, were inside the wood and they hit it. So how these cracks are done. Directional warp, the DT uh, direction, directional warp, with just a scratch generator. Just, uh, I always use a small, uh, a bit of spline distortion, fade mode, start plus end, very important. Explain number number five twelve. So then you uh, distort it with this warp. You can uh, sculpt it a little with a slope blur grayscale. Still using the clouds too, and then safe transform to rotate it ninety degrees. And you just have to send it in uh, levels. Maybe this is too much, I don't know, depending on uh, what you want to keep. And another directional warp, but it's not very important. And a subtract, and we have our cracks. I also used the mask, because I didn't want the cracks to be uh, everywhere on the wood. So just the clouds too with the levels. If you want to copy my settings. All right, let's move on. Now we have uh, some bands, colored bands, that are uh, really uh, part of the wood, like this. It's not necessarily something that is natural, but sometimes, you know, in some um, some planks, we have this kind of complexity. So I needed to have it. Let's see how it's down. It's a bit more complex, but uh, the beginning is uh, it's always uh, relatively simple. It's a tile sampler. Just wanted vertical lines with different uh, gray values. So I used uh, color random to the max. Sometimes I uh, didn't have that line, so because I used a mask random. Here are the X and Y elements. Uh, you know, only uh, three shapes vertically and 33 horizontally. Then, you know, with uh, by playing with the size, playing with a bit of scale random and the offset, you can uh, get something like this. And of course, I blurred it a little. I used a subtract with another with a transform 2D just to break some lines a little, as you can see here. And kept going. This time, I wanted more lines, so I used a Max Layton with another transform. And each time, I just uh, you know produce a small rotation, offset it a little. Another example here. This time I used a uh, subtract. But of course, this doesn't tile, even though it's not uh, very important. But I wanted it to tile at least vertically, so I used a make a tile patch grayscale, and now it tiles vertically, and of course, horizontally. The make a tile patch grayscale and the make a tile photo are not easy to use. There are lots of uh, controls, but uh, with this kind of uh, patterns, it's uh, quite it qu it's quite easy to to manage. So I just uh, turned on the octave. No disorder, no size variation. Mask size up to one. Then just use a small directional warp, of course. 
to give it a more organic look. And the intensity inputs, uh, well, I used this. So here it's just a mask. So as this is not used anywhere else, uh, we should look at this and see how it's down because it's used for uh, our bands. So where does this come, come from? Oh, okay, it comes from the veins. So no problem, we have uh, covered them already. It's just a slope per grayscale, 32 intensity in samples. Directional warp based, I think, on our planks, on our textured planks. Uh, this time I used a multi-directional warp, the one made by Vincent Go, as the input, just a pallet noise. Of course, with a gradient map, because we need a color input. So this directional warp goes into the strength and angle of the multi-directional warp. Global angle 1, strength value 0.05. And then just a grayscale conversion. And that goes into the intensity of put, input sorry, of this directional warp. Then just a, a mask based on the, this levels node. That just decreased uh, the level out high. So we have our bands. Then I played with a levels node to increase the darker parts and uh, the lighter ones. Safe transform to rotate it at 90 degrees once again. And here we have it. Our bands are live. Okay, it's cool. We covered a lot of the texturing work, but not everything. We'd like to talk about the additional textures and also, you know, the text and bitmaps and uh, the wood carving. But as this video is already long enough, I'm just going to finish it with the additional textures. So the scratches, just a subtract. So I think it's just a directional uh, scratches. Uh, sorry, a scratches generator. Yes. When you do uh, very small scratches, you want uh, a high count, a high amount. I just choose uh, approximately 1K, spine number of 1K some random rotation as usual as a fade mode start plus end just the levels where I uh, decreased the level how high as usual the directional warp To break the scratches based on the planks limits, planks borders, and then the scratches. The grain, let's see it in action. I think it's uh, grainy fibers, it's here. So just use a um, min darken blending mode. And as the foreground, I just use uh, a directional noise, but tiled uh, a lot, eight times actually, with a safe transform grayscale. But what does produce this uh, grainy, uh, grainy texture? Nothing uh, major. Sometimes, as, as I said, it's really easy here. I produced some impacts and I like them. I like uh, how they feel. I think they are really uh, natural. They're good looking. These impacts actually 
are made um, once the blanks are laid together, are built. It's not part of the wood, it's really, uh, they, come, uh, they came later because the, the wood was uh, used, maybe as a, as a floor, as a ground. So I used a, a mask, but uh, before talking about the mask, let's see how um, this effect is done. But as you can see, uh, the mask is crucially important. And it's the blending, it's the combination of the foreground and the opacity that produce a nice looking result. So it's a complex graph for this effect, so I don't know. It's complex, it's not very optimized. I think it can do much better than that. So I'm not gonna talk about it because it's not optimized. I'm just gonna show you the end result. As you can see, it's based just on a, on a sales node, a sales tree. Could, uh, could suffice, could be enough, and then just have to play with uh, slope blurs and uh, a multi-directional warp, I would say, and you can get this kind of result. But the way I did it, it's too complicated. It's too much. So prefer not to cover it precisely. The blend blending mode is subtract. Uh, as a mask, I used it. I think it's just a cloud three with a directional warp and some blur. With uh, levels, a directional warp to base the levels on the on the planks borders. Not sure it's uh, it's very very important. And you have the impacts, industrial impacts. Then I wanted you know some lines that we can see on uh, very uh, dry and very hot wood. Deep lines, but we really cut the wood like this. And I think there are two numerous. So I'm just gonna um, decrease the amount of them. Where it is, it's here. Yes, it's a scratches generator. What's the amount? 256. Let's try um, 150. Even 100. Yeah, I think it's better this way. Because if we want a high value, a high subtract value, we don't want uh, the lines to be numerous. So yes, it's just a scratches generator. You could use it, uh, you could use the lines like that, but just uh, try to texture them a little. With, uh, you know, uh, the basis of our uh, sawing effect. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna cover it once again. So just to multiply blending mode. And we have our lines. So the texturing work is done. We covered a lot of things, the vi fibers, veins, all of the texturing source, the planks damages, the nuts, the pattern and the texturing base. Um, the industrial effect, just a little, but uh, it's too complicated, not optimized, but it's, uh, it's not a problem. We also have other damages that are only in the normal. Next, uh, next time, in the next video, in the part two, we'll cover the wood carving, the text and bitmap inlay, in fact. So this and this frame here. And um, yeah, that would be all right. And in the third video, third part, we'll cover the roughness, other damages, and hold the color process. Okay, this video is already took already too much time, but uh, it was important. Wood is one of the most important things that you can make with Substance Designer. It's a very, very important subject. 
And as I uh, already presented you, uh, showed you uh, stylized wood bark, I thought, okay, let's continue with uh, wood, and this time a realistic wood, wood substance. Thanks for watching. See you soon for part two.